Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Whiskey Wanderers. Today we have a wander from a Costco in Valencia, which is a city right outside of Los Angeles proper that I don't usually go to um, because they don't usually get anything great. But today was the day of the day, the day that the blind squirrel finally finds a nut and finds the Jack Daniels 12 year old. So today we are doing our whiskey wander in the Costco Valencia where we see some Jack Daniels 12, the Woodford Reserve Kentucky Derby Special Edition and a whiskey that I've been seeing over the last year or so uh, here and there but I just can never seem to pull the trigger on it, the Pinhook High Rye and really a whole bunch more. Now before we get to the video, if you do like these videos, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help our channel to grow. We are super thankful for that. But also you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. All right now, let's get down to the video. So while we are waiting for the WandaVision to get warmed up here and uh, <laughs> wait for me to get warmed up, let's do a whiskey check, a real quick one today. And we're gonna do a uh, Blanton's alternative, uh, sort of, which is this Hancock Presidential Reserve. Now, if you wanna see exactly how it does actually stack up against Blanton's as an alternative, uh, check out our video that we did earlier this week, uh, the Is It Better Than Blanton's video. I'll put a link up here if you have not seen that one already, so you can see. Let's see if we can get a pop on this one. Ah, not too bad, not too bad. Get a little bit of juice. Oh yeah. And to whiskey, because honestly, let's face it, you can never drink too much of it. You can only just really drink it too fast. Cheers. Mm. All right, so today we are gonna start with a whiskey that is uh, undoubtedly going to be the star of this wander. It is the whole reason why Valencia will even make it into the wander category is because of this Jack Daniels 12 years old. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. That's nice, huh? Now, Jack Daniels of late is definitely not your grandfather's Jack Daniels, and boy did Grandpa love his Jack Daniels. But Jack Daniels, though, right now, seems to have turned over a new leaf and is starting to focus on whiskey that is top shelf, that is very interesting and unique, and this is more apparent than ever with the release of its highest age statement whiskey as of yet from the Tennessee whiskey maker in basically the last 100 years or so. Now, this Jack Daniels 12 is significant for a couple of reasons. One is because it is the second age statement that has been put out recently by Jack Daniels. The first was the Jack Daniels 10, and the ages seem to match up with the arrival of the master distiller Chris Fletcher, formerly of Buffalo Trace, who also took up the post at Jack Daniels about 12 years ago, so we can do the math. But also, hopefully, it is a harbinger of what is yet to come. And perhaps maybe there are going to be Jack Daniels 18s or maybe even Jack Daniels 21s uh, you know, if we can wait that long and if you can get them. So this Jack Daniels 12 is highly allocated. And by that I mean, they produced 18,000 bottles, which yes, <laughs> it is a lot of bottles, but it really is a truly minuscule amount for Jack Daniels. It's the same exact whiskey that we all know and love from the Jack Daniels Lucky Number no. 7. So that is 80% corn, 12% rye, and 8% malted barley, but it is stored for an additional eight years or so. It's also put higher up uh, in the warehouse uh, to get those angels drunk so they take their angel share. And also interestingly enough, um, it comes out in a 700 milliliter bottle, as you can see right there. Because if there's one thing that we know about Jack Daniels is that if they are going to make an expensive whiskey, they're going to sell it to Americans here, and they're also gonna sell it to Americans while they are abroad in the duty free, so 700 milliliters. Now the price that we see it here at uh, Costco in Valencia is at $76.99, which is basically at or maybe even below the MSRP, I think. And since I cannot seem to find these bottles pretty much anywhere, not at Total Wine nor at BevMo, I don't really have any realistic comparables to show you all. Um, I mean, you can get them from the mom and pop stores, maybe your local liquor store, uh, but you're gonna pay $300 to $400 and that's just not a realistic number. <laughs> now, one thing that I think that's important to mention uh, on this wander and really about Costco overall, especially when it comes to allocated whiskeys, is they seem to be acting very suspicious. You know, first, uh, for example, for this one specifically, it was not on the shelf and it was probably never gonna hit the shelf. Second, they only got six bottles, uh, which is not that uncommon, but it did come to a Costco that doesn't usually get any great stuff at all. 
And last is that all four were sold in the first 10 minutes of the opening, but two were left for employees who had them on hold at the front, which doesn't seem fair to me, right? If you're gonna work for the lottery, you can't win the lottery, but I'll leave it at that. Now, the thing is, the only reason I even knew that this one was there is because I had been walking by and my sharp-eyed, beautiful wife had noticed that it was in full view inside the cage. So I know, I know, I get it. Costco was doing some things that they are claiming are trying to make it more fair uh, for the bourbon and whiskey uh, lovers and really they're fighting against the bourbonistas and the bourbon syndicates that are springing up everywhere and also fighting against their own bourbon loving employees i get that too um but it's still getting i don't know just getting a bit weird i don't know if anyone else has noticed that anyways the abv on this jack daniels 12 is a very very healthy 53.5 percent or 107 proof and with the higher ABV and the higher age statement, I'm really interested to see how that ends up morphing the standard Jack Daniels flavor. Speaking of which, the tasting notes mention that it is quite thick and viscous. There is a fair amount of ABV burn, oakiness, ginger, dark berries, so think things like mulberries and blackberries and custard, and a sugary fruit cup syrup, which <laughs> all sound pretty delicious. The reviews that I can find on this one, as expected, are outstanding. Uh, it got 92 points out of 100. So it's definitely gonna be something to pick up if you can find it, if you are quick enough, and if you can find it at a reasonable price, even if it is a little bit over the MSRP. So for us, this one was a definite buy, and that is uh, the pride of this week, which is Jack Daniels 12. Now for a whiskey that you won't have to battle with any of the bourbon syndicates or Costco employees or internet whiskey sleuths or local bourbon gurus who always seem to know when uh, the great whiskey is coming in is this Pinhook High Rye. Now Pinhook is a whiskey that I have started to notice on the shelves for the last year or so. Um, they have pretty distinctive bottles and they are always equestrian themed like a 12 year old girl's uh, paper binders. <laughs> but I have not been able to pull the trigger on any of them as of late um, because they are, well they're a relatively new brand. Uh, I think it started back in 2010 and they were started by a restaurateur and a financier. Uh, so they don't really have any previous whiskey experience. That doesn't mean that they can't make great whiskey but it does mean that I would need to see some real great reviews before I even jump into it. But the bottles do look interesting. Now this Pinhook High Proof Rye Whiskey that we see here today um, is sort of rare. I haven't really seen it in person anywhere else other than this Costco. And though, even though it does seem to have been started by, and maybe we'll call them politely uh, bourbon dilettantes, the Pinhook High Proof does gain some cred as it is one of the first whiskeys that is distilled completely at Castle and Key Distillery, whereas prior they were using a uh, distillate from MGP, like all the other new people. This is actually pretty cool because the Castle and Key Distillery is the original distillery that Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor, you know, E.H. Taylor, uh, that guy uh, used to make his whiskey. This one is specifically a 2022 release and it has a mash bill of 60% rye, 20% corn and 2% malted barley. The price that we see here at Costco is at $46.99, which is the same price that you could find it at a couple Total Wines. Um, but one strange thing about this one is that if you go direct to the distiller, they will actually charge you more at $51.99. So obviously I think they would rather have people buy it from the big box stores. This also means that if we did end up buying it here at the Costco in Valencia, um, then we would have saved $8 off the direct price or 17.2%. So <laughs> maybe they didn't give themselves the bulk discount that Costco gets. The ABV on the Pinhook High Proof Rye is at 58.2% <laughs> or 116.4 proof, which is definitely what I like to see. Um, but there is not an age statement on it. And the tasting notes, uh, although they are sparse, um, and uh, in fact, I don't think I have any real people one. I just have the tasting notes from the company. But they mentioned things like orange blossom, honeysuckle, green apple, baking spices, walnuts, and dates, which sounds okay, right? Speaking of a paucity of reviews, uh, it doesn't seem like those folks who are drinking it are also writing any reviews about it um, because I could only find a few, in fact, less than a handful that range from a very suspicious five-star review on Total Wine that says the best thing since sliced bread for someone who's claiming that it is the worst bourbon they have ever had. So there isn't any real reliable scoring on this one. Now that being said, it was a pass. It's a whiskey that doesn't have much street cred. It was put out by folks with obviously a lot of money, but uh, maybe not that much experience. And it doesn't seem like anyone is really excited to drink it. So for me, it's a pass. All right, so last up today is a tried and true whiskey that I don't want to say is resorting to cheap tricks to stay relevant, like, you know, Madonna on The Late Show. I don't know. Um, but it is the Woodford Reserve Distillery Select Kentucky Derby 
50th anniversary bottle. This Woodford specifically is a one liter bottle. It has Secretariat on the front of it, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Triple Crown win. It was done by a local Kentucky artist, so I think that's pretty cool. But other than that, it is the standard Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Juice that's inside the bottle with a mash bill of 18% rye, 10% malted barley, and 72% corn. And it is composed of both pot stilled whiskey from Woodford and then calm distilled whiskey from Bound Foreman. Also, also, apparently it is the official brand of the Kentucky Derby, which also kind of makes sense and also would make it really weird uh, if they had this horse on the front from the Kentucky Derby and they weren't, right? <laughs> Now the price we see here at Costco is at $39.99 and it's the same price that you'll end up getting it at Total Wine, but of course Bebo has it at $51.99. So buying it at Costco, there is not going to be a big difference from the price on Total Wine. The ABV on it is at 45.2% or 90.4 proof, which is okay, right? It's not bad. Um, it is a non-age statement and the tasting notes mention that it has a very thin mouthfeel. It is sweet, uh, has rye, oakiness, green peppers, uh, which is interesting, and uh, vanilla. The overall scores that I could find on it, and there were many, many, many scores to gather up, uh, but it got an average score of around 81 points out of 100. So uh, for us, <laughs> this one was gonna be a pass. All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wanders at the Costco in Valencia. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, if you like the Wanders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, and we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, because it does help the channel to grow, and again, thank you. But also, it is good for your whiskey mojo, it pleases the whiskey gods, and you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays, or <laughs> kind of whenever they come out in between. All right, now, before I go, just a reminder, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And in this case, <laughs> it might even be me. All right, everybody, I'm out. Have a great rest of your week and adios.